I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is August 26, 2019. In this video, I'll be showing you how to easily print out text on your 3D printer to hang on your wall. Okay, so here is my basic idea. A while ago, I found this picture on Pinterest, and you can see up here, if you're familiar with HTML and HTML tags, and as a coder, I am. So I looked at this and thought, ah, that's a cool idea. I could somehow put that in my new office. And uh, it popped up again. I was like, okay, I'm going to go do this. So I figured it's pretty easy to do this in OpenSCAD. So I'm going to use OpenSCAD to do this. Um, and my, my idea is I'm going to do work. For people who are familiar with, with uh, HTML tags, uh, there's a start and a stop tag. So I'm going to do a start work and a stop work in my office as I enter and exit. Um, so with that... Let me go over some of the things I did to get it done and then show you guys how you can do your own signs. It's, it's a really easy thing, but uh, I'm going to show you how to do an open SCAD and also to get the fonts that you want. So the first thing you probably want to do, if you've already downloaded open SCAD, um, and for those of you who may be unfamiliar with open SCAD, go to open SCAD, I think it's open SCAD.org, right? Yeah, let me go look real quick. Yep, open SCAD.org. Download the program. It's a way to do 3D images as code. Then you can save them off as STL files and print them out. Um, I've done a couple other videos on that. So you can go look up and, and see how to do that if you're unfamiliar with it. So first thing I did is go to, I want to see what a font that I liked. So I went to fonts.google.com. I found this nice resource. And you can start searching through here. Or just, you know, meander around and try to find a font you want. Now, in my case, I found Alpha Slab 1 was one I liked. So I downloaded that. I already have it set up, but let me go get another font. Maybe I can find some other font and show you how to uh, install a font, at least in Windows 10, because you need the font to be installed so OpenSCAD can see it. So let me go see if I can see... Do you have any Spider-Man fonts? Ah, ooh. ooh. Well, that's kind of... Let me go find something a little weird looking. Now, this is not the only place to find fonts. I mean, there's plenty of places. Okay, let's go... Lobster. So I'll click on lobster here and click on this. And I don't think you can actually download it from here, can you? Open font license. Okay, I didn't, uh, I remember looking around here, I didn't see where to download it from here. But I used this so I could quickly search and find something that I wanted. So now I did, went over here and I went uh, to just to search for. Uh, lobster font. Plenty of places to download them. Here's Font Squirrel. I think that's what I used last time. And so once you find something you want, just download the OTF or download the font from wherever you can find it. Let me show this in my folder. And let me extract it all. And so now I have, here's the font. But I need to install it. So at least in Windows 10, you can go C, there we go, go onto your C drive and go to the Windows folder, and in here there should be a fonts folder. It's kind of a unique folder that has all these fonts, and really all you do is drag and drop this in there, and hopefully it will show up. And then do a little quick search for lobster, looks like it's there. So now, let me go in to... Let me go into OpenSCAD, and I've got, uh, I've already uploaded this one with the work on um, Thingiverse, and I'll show that in a second, but let me show you how to change what fonts you can, you can choose in OpenSCAD. So here, uh, I like to set the settings so I can set it, you know, that's kind of how detailed it's going to be. You can set it high or low, depends on what your needs are, depends on the font too. Uh, and we'll do a letter. So I'm going to copy what I did over here to my right. Letter height equals 5, and font size, we'll just say 100 in this case. And then now we want to do the font. So here's where it gets a little fun. So we can say font equals, and we want to put a font in here, but we don't know what might be available. So what I'll do is I'll go here to help font list, click on that, and then we can search for lobster. Oh, you know what? I might need to restart this because I've probably only seen what is there right now. So let me go open up a new S CAD. So say new, and hopefully we can get the font list. Be, oh, 
you know what? I probably need to kill all my OpenS cats running right now. So let me kill all the OpenS cad, discard everything. And hopefully I can get this working. Okay, you don't want to do it, do you? Why? It has to refresh it. Can I force a refresh? Let me go open up Microsoft Word to make sure that I actually do have this lobster font installed correctly. Testing. Let's go down here. Oh, lobster 1.3. Okay, it's there. Just open SK has not seen it for some reason. Okay, let me go investigate that and figure out what the problem is. Okay, I got it figured out, but boy, it was a little torturous. This is a Windows thing that they've goobered up. So I'll put these links to some downloads here. So I'm gonna go download three fonts and get them working open SCAD. So I'll just go down here to Alpha Slab, which is the one I'm using for this one. Specifically, download that. And there's a Lobster one I found. And a Learning Curve Pro. It looks cool. I'm going to download that too. Which, this one brings me to another site. Download. There we go. Now, over here, I got all these in my download. Let me just extract them all into their own folders. Extract. Now close that, extract the, lo the lobster one, and extract uh, the learning curve. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, my C drive and go into window the Windows folder and go into the Fonts folder. So you can see here, this is C Windows Fonts. These are all my fonts that are available to me. Now. They made a change here in Windows that kind of threw me off. And this is what took me a long time to figure out. So if I go into Alpha Slab, I can, there's a couple of things I can do. I can just drag and drop this, but the most convenient thing is just right click on this and say install. And that's typically what I would do is I would drag, typically I would just drag and drop, but install is even more convenient. So I click install. So it installs the font. And then I go over here and I look for Alpha Slab and there it is. But there's a problem that they've made a change in Windows. So now if I go here and look at the properties of this, the actual location, oh, this one's okay. Why are you okay? That one's okay. Okay, that might be okay because it's probably already there before. Ah, that might be why it's okay before. Let me use a better example. So let me go to Lobster, right click on this, hit install. It'll install, and if I go over here and look at Lobster, I can see it's right there. Well, let me delete both of these to make sure there's, because I had another Lobster in here too. Let me delete them both. I want to start fresh. Okay, click install. And boom, there we are. Now if I right click on this and look at the properties, it's actually not in the Windows fonts directory. It's actually in my users, Patman, App Data, local, Microsoft, da 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 da. It's in a directory for my user that I'm logged in as right now. And they've done that on purpose recently, I guess, because that font, if I install it in that fashion, that font cannot be seen by other users. Uh, so let me kill this. I'll delete this. And so what you should be doing is you right click on this and click on install for all users. If I do that, I can look at here, now look at the properties, and I'll see it is in Windows fonts. Perfect. Now, why is this even happening? This is happening, let me go, I'll install the other one here real quick, learning curve. Does it really matter? I'll just grab, this has several different versions. I'll install for all users. Now it's already installed. Okay, I guess I installed it before. Yep, yep, I didn't do it too. Let me do a double check on that, make sure they're in the right location. Okay, right. Yep, right location. 
Now, what happened was, since this is a traditional place where everything is located at, OpenSCAD is using another program called Font Config to go find the fonts and, I don't know, do some preparatory work to make sure they're ready to go. And it looks in this directory, and it does not look in the other directory. If you're a crazy person, and I don't suggest you do this because it is way too much heavy lifting, if for some reason you actually want to support both directories, the traditional and the new one, there's a way to do that. But I was, I'll show you real quickly because I dug in and was at first doing this until I found this better way. Um, so if I go into uh, my C drive again, go to my C drive, go to my program uh, files and find where OpenSCAD is installed. Next to OpenSCAD, I should see, see fonts. I think it's in there. And here is where the font config is getting its configuration. So I should be able to right click on that, send to, let's see, well, let me open a notepad here. And then I should be able to open this fonts.com file and I'll just drop it in here. Uh, in fact, you may have to, if, uh, anyway, you have to change some stuff on here. But if you look at this file, you need to open this file somehow. If you look at this file, here is the directory it's looking for, the Windows font directory. And that's the central one. So to get the other directory, you basically have to do something like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy and paste here because I have a different version here. You have to go in. and put this beast in. You have to go, because the actual folder would be C users, your username, app data local Microsoft Windows fonts. And you can go find that directory and if you did it, if you installed it the wrong way, you'd see all those fonts in there. And so you say, go look here. And if you did that, it would work. It would look at both directories, but I don't suggest doing that because it's a, it's a bit cumbersome. Just install them correctly to begin with. Um, so I'll say, don't say it, but I don't want to change it. So now, so now that I've gotten through that headache, which took way too long to figure out, um, now what do I do? So let me go open up OpenSCAD. Now, when you install new fonts, you may have to reopen at OpenSCAD because it may have to go look at the font folder and pull the new fonts, and it's not going to automatically look every single time. So you may have to restart OpenSCAD. So I'll hit it with a new, and I will... Let me actually open up my other one that I had opened recently. So this is the actual program I have working. So I'll just run it real quick to show what it's doing. Now see, when I run this, it went and looked at the fonts. You saw that little thing pop up there. So there we are, and we're good to go. So let's make some text. Start off, let's see. I got my flow off now. Uh, I like to set this FN number because this says how detailed it can be. The higher the number, the more rounded things are going to look. So you can do it lower for faster rendering than do it higher when you actually are want to get done. But these, we're going to only do a few letters, so it shouldn't take too long. So I'll do a letter height equals five. Now, Open SCAD is unitless, so when you say five, it says five. Five what? Five miles, five feet. But uh, STL files are unitless too. And typically, all the, you know, especially with the Sprusa, five, the number means millimeters. That's typically the way that it kind of syncs up. So when I say five, five millimeters tall. And I'll do a font size. In fact, I'll purposely do a smaller one so that you have to adjust it. Say so a font size equals 80. And then we actually have to set the font. Font equals what? I don't have to set it. Well, if I don't set it, I'll kind of get whatever the default is. So now I'll say string equals, and I'll do this work thing I'm doing. Maybe I'll do happy. How about happy? Happy on. Um, and then we'll say, do a little copy and paste over here. We'll say text. This is the command to make the text. The string is pulling from this string. The font size pulls from that side. The font, the font's that, and center, and, and center it, and align it correctly, which is not really a big deal in this case. And I'll render it, and do something you don't like. Oh, I forgot to put a semicolon there. Okay. Right. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now I haven't done any three-dimensional. It's just two-dimensional, and it's working just fine. So hooray. Um, 
but that's a default font. So if I want to choose a different font, what I need to do is say font equals something, but what font? And you have to say that specifies really specific. I go up here and I say font list. And if you adjust the program, it'll actually create the font list. And so I will look up, um, what do I say? Learning curve. So I hit learning curve bold, click on that, and I'll say copy to clipboard. This tool is just to help you find a font. It doesn't really show you what they look like, but it just helps you so you can copy what text needs to go in the code. So I, like I said, copy a clipboard, close this, and then I will paste that in, learning curve style bold. And so now if I render this, oh, semicolon, if I render this, you see it changed. So now it is using that font, so cool. So if that's the font you wanted, the next thing you need to do is actually extrude it. So I'll do a linear extrude, extrude, which is just gonna you know have it go up so many millimeters. And I'll say letter height. So I'll use that variable. You don't have to do that, I just like to make everything clean, easy to read. And there we go. There is my happy. That's five millimeters. Now I suggest splitting this out, but at first I suggest doing it all together so you can see how big you need to make it. Because I prefer to make it the right size versus trying to make it bigger in um, your slicer. So here I'll leave it at 80, which I think will be too small if you're going to try to maximize the size. So I'll make an STL file and I'll just put it on my desktop and call it happy. And then I will open up Prusa Slicer real quick. Or real slow. And then we'll go find this happy file. There you go, happy. Drag it in there. And now my thinking is, if you want to maximize the size, you want to kind of get, oh yeah, this happy might not be the, well, no, because they should, even though it's curved, they should connect. So if you print them out one at a piece, you want to put them next to each other, they should, well, they're going to overlap each other. Ah, a curvy one's probably not a good choice. Unless you know they're not going to, they're going to be a little bit butt up against each other. Well, I'll, I'll go with it. So you can see, if I was trying to maximize the size, Every single letter fits in here just fine, so I can go much bigger. So I will delete this. And we know that 80 is too small. So we'll go 180, render that one out, make it happy again. Then we'll, place, we'll replace it. And then we will drop it back in. Now let's see how we're doing. So we can see the, the arrow fits, the Y would fit, the P would fit, P, P, H. You can go a little bit bigger. But let's just say that's as big as you want to go. Now let's go as big as we can. Now let's go big. Let's go bigger. So we'll say 220. We'll save the STL file. Replace it. Okay, let's see. Does every letter fit? Yes, barely, barely, barely. And it looks like it all fits just fine. A little close on that one, but it fits. Okay, so that should do us. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back because I want them individual, individualized individual files just to make life easier. So I will come down here and I will call this string one. I'll say string two equals, if we're gonna follow the same pattern that I'm doing where we're doing HTML, I mean, you could do your own, you don't need to do HTML, you could just do um, your name or whatever you wanna do, but HTML is kind of a coder joke, I guess.
I guess I don't need to do two P's because I can just print it twice, right? There we go. And so I would set that up and then I come down here and say string equals string two. Just for convenience sake, because the string character is being put, the string variable is being put down here. And so I can just kind of change that variable right here to be the only one that I want. So I'll render that and I get my little arrow and I'll just save every STL file. So I'll say, well, this one you can't really, if you try to do this, you might have problems. So I'll say less than, and then we'll do a three, render that one. And we'll say H and so on and so forth. Then you can get every little letter as an individual file, but also you made sure that they're all going to fit the way that you want at the, at the maximum size. Because if you're doing a font like the A here, if I try to maximize the A, then the H would be too big to print out. That's why I did that all together at once. So I could make sure I can get the maximum size for all the characters that I want to print out. So if I go to the STL file, so I go over to Prusa Slicer, let me drop in the H, there's my H, and just render it. So just like I did this, five millimeters seem to work pretty good, but you can go a little higher or lower, but um, I like that. In fact, my daughter's asking for some stuff now too, so we might get her in a video to set up what she wants. So um, that's the long and short of it. There's not too much difficulty to it. The difficulty, especially in this case, was getting the, getting the right font downloaded and installed correctly so that I could do it the e do it. And OpenSCAD is much is a very quick way to do this. So there you go. So let me um, let me do let me go over the details and actually show you what the results are that, are that I have. Okay, let me go over all the details. So in this case there's a lot of details because I have how many letters? 13 letters? Because I have anyway. A lot of letters because I have work on the outside and stop work on the inside with the tags. A lot of letters, a lot of time. So let me go over the grand details to get the whole project done. So the whole project took 27 hours and 31 minutes to print. 13 big letters. Hey, I wrote it down. Good. It took 0 0.58 kilograms worth of filament. And at $20 per kilogram, that comes out to $11.60 worth of kilogram. Kilogram per $11.60 worth of material. Uh, electric electricity took about two, uh, 28 cents of electricity based on 10 cents per kilowatt hour for a grand total of $11.88 to make both these signs on the inside and outside, 13 letters in total. Uh, the cheapest letter took about an hour. The, the shortest time was about an hour for the smallest letter. The longest time was about four hours. And the cheapest uh Overall, the cheapest ones are a little under 50 cents. The most expensive one was a little bit over, was $1.32. But overall, totally worth it. And if you had to go, you know, buy this in a store, you'd spend more. Uh, and also, depending on your needs, it you doesn't have to be five millimeters tall. I could, probably could have got away with half that height. Uh, but I do, I do like the thickness of this five millimeters. So if you half the height, you'd probably half the cost and half the time. So it's up to what you need. Or if you want something thicker, you can go thicker real easily. Uh, but with that, uh, just a few more helpful hints of what I'm doing is I'm still trying to position them correctly. So what I did at first, oh, well, let me back up a second. Let me show where they are on Thingiverse and Prusa org. So this happens to be th my version. If you want my version, it says work. It's thing 3830288. And on Prusa, it is 5321. And I'll put links in the show notes. Um, but what I'm doing right now to put them up, because I wasn't sure where to position them exactly. I want to adjust them. Um, I don't want to nail anything into the wall. Uh, I'm using this Loctite stuff. And just so just for convenience, here's a link to what I'm uh, on Amazon. But I, you know, get this from Walmart the other day. Uh, and this is just kind of sticky stuff. You stick on the back, stick it on. Uh, but overall, my wife's not a big fan of this because over time, sometimes they tend to fall off or she's not too happy with them. And um, I tend to agree with her on that. But I'm using it to position them temporarily and get, get them exactly where I want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these uh, Velcro strips. So there's these, um, what do they call it? This 3M command, command brand, whatever it is. I've been using these for a long time for different things where I stick them on a wall. They hold really well. You can Velcro, and it's Velcro, so you can come on off. 
And also, if you have to, once you take them off the wall, you don't do any damage. So once I get these where I want, I'm going to probably put one per letter, stick them up there, and I think I'll be good to go. So that's my plan. And with that, this is most of the video, but let me give you a quick video tour of what's gotten done. So here it is on the outside, and I think it's pretty cool. And I think my wife likes it too. So we'll get it Velcroed on. I'll leave it there for a couple of days, make sure it's where I want it to be before I Velcro it. Um, but I like it a lot, and so it also helps, you know, just a coder joke. It'll help other people who are coders who, if someone visits, I can see if they're a programmer, because here's my start work, and on the inside, I got the opposite tag. Let's see. And there is the stop work, so I think it's a lot of fun, and I think I might print out some more stuff, not necessarily for my office, but, uh, I think my daughter might want a few things. So there's an easy way to print, get letter, lettering set up in OpenSCAD and print it out. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.